Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Legends Under Lights. It's brought to you by Legacy Lighting and you can check them out at LegacySportLighting.com. Get all your details for all your lighting needs right there. Well, I've been looking forward to this one. We've got a true legend of the sport, there is no doubt about that. He's the first Australian to have won a Commonwealth Games gold medal in singles. He, uh, he was cap number 71 for Australia, made 127 appearances. That included three Commonwealth Games, three Trans-Tasmans, two Asia-Pacific Championships and one World Championships. It is an absolute pleasure to be joined here by Rob Perella. Welcome, Rob. Great pleasure to, to, to be on uh, with you, Clive. Yeah, mate, uh, let's look, you've got a wonderful history and we're going to work through all of that as we go. But let's start with your background. You were born in Italy in 1944. Uh, and how was early life for, uh, for Rob Perella? Well, it was just after the war, as you know, uh, 1944. Uh, I, uh, my dad came to Australia in 1953 and uh, I left my mum with uh, five children. And uh, I... I started to play bocce when I was about seven year old. Uh, and uh, we had to, whoever lost had to play, had to pay for lollies. Uh, it had to be five litres to pay for lollies. And I asked mum for my five litres and, uh, and my mum really couldn't afford it. But anyway, she did give it to me. And I held my five litres in my pocket uh, because in case I lost, I had to pay for it. And I, I feel uh, because of that, I bought my uh, 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 that I did, didn't want to lose. I couldn't lose, uh, so I had to I had to win to, uh, to keep my five leaves. Otherwise, I couldn't play bowls anymore. And uh, so I uh, uh, that's why I, I I really took that with me right through my bowls career. Absolutely. So um, so when did you move to Australia yourself, and and uh, what was behind that? Well, uh, when I came to Australia, we went to out west and uh, my dad was growing tobacco and uh, we, uh, uh, we got out there and we went to school in Inglewood, a little place called Inglewood in uh, out west, uh, just near the border of New South Wales. And, uh, and of course, it was a pretty hard life. Uh, but when I went to school, I, I couldn't speak any English at all. And uh, it was pretty hard for me to... Uh, uh, with the kids uh, and that, so I couldn't understand them. And uh, of course, the first word I learned was "shut up." <laughs> and uh, and if I didn't like what they said, I just had to. Say, uh, my uh, my word was "shut up." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, but uh, then we, uh, you know, 21. I came to Brisbane. We came to live in Brisbane in, uh, when I was 21, and uh, I found a job in Brisbane as a barber shop as a as a barber, because uh, I learned my trade out there with my family, and uh, I helped them on tobacco, and it was really, really hard work. Uh, long hours, and uh, and uh, but we enjoyed it because it was uh, it was an easy life, and uh, uh, and we all there were so many, so many uh, friendship and made, and uh, yeah, because there wasn't many people there, it was only about fifteen hundred people in the town. And uh, so, but when I came to Brisbane, I was a bit shocked when uh, I got on the tram to go to, uh, to, to Brisbane itself from Kedron. And I sat next to this guy and, uh, and I said, good morning, you know, and that. And of course he looked at me and I thought, he thought I was a criminal because he <laughs> nearly ends the back. <laughs> and uh, I, I just was shocked uh, to come into a city and, uh, and, and people didn't didn't want to know you, right? And uh, but I continued on, and uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, I got a job as a barber with, uh, 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 and then uh, uh, of course the barber shop was. Uh, then a couple of years I was bowling, uh, and I uh, continue. Uh, barbering for about five years and uh, there wasn't much money at all in the bowls okay in, in the other shop yeah. and, uh, i decided to buy a taxi uh, in 1970 73 uh, 
But I, uh, I started playing lawn bowls when I was six, in 1969. Right. How did that happen? Because you'd obviously had the, the bocce background. So bowls, I guess, is a natural step. Yeah, with, with the bocce, I learned how to, how to weight control more than anything. Uh, I only had to learn the, the curve of the bowl, uh, uh, but weight was always there, and that helped me a lot. Uh, my brother, John, uh, he, um, he's the one that started me off because he, uh, he started in 1959, and he became a, a very good bowler. Uh, he represented the state. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, skipping and uh, yeah, it was a really a uh, terrific bowler, and uh, I sort of followed his footsteps. And, Fantastic! Uh, yeah, so uh, that's what started me off. All right, let's get into your uh, Commonwealth Games because uh, I'm I'm really interested in in hearing some of these stories. So you 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 played at three Commonwealth Games. The first was in Brisbane in 1982, which must have been very special and. You uh, you claimed silver, unfortunately going down to Willie Wood and these names these names that you played were the, the names of the sport, weren't they? And tell us about that experience. Yeah, well, uh, I was pretty favourite to win in, in Brisbane because the greens was uh, my liking, and uh, I was winning games by uh, big margins. And uh, when I played Willie Wood, we were supposed to be playing on one green, and uh, they they switched us. To another green where he already played six games on it. Right. And, uh, Whereabouts was that? Yeah, pardon? Whereabouts? Which club? It was in uh, in uh, Maruka in Brisbane. Right. Uh, yeah, and we had we had four greens there, and uh, and the excuse was that they couldn't pick us up in, on television, and uh, and really uh, the day before I played the Englishman. Uh, and uh, we played on ring 15, and uh, and we were scheduled to play on ring 16 uh, against Willie Wood, uh, and they picked me up on the television there, so there was just an excuse uh, more than anything else, and we were pretty upset about it, but uh, of course I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, we just had to play uh, where they the put us, uh, when they changed the greens, and uh, yeah, so I did, and unfortunately, uh, Willie played better than I did, and uh, on that green, and uh, I ended up losing. That's, and of uh, course, uh, uh, we, we had uh, well, I had ten games out of twelve, and he had eleven games out of twelve. So mm -hmm. I ended up winning the silver uh, because we those days we played everyone. Uh, it wasn't sectional play. Right. And, uh, yeah. So uh, I had a, I had a great time and. Uh, but I was disappointed uh, that I didn't play on ring 15 instead of uh, <laughs> ring nine. <laughs> but you got your chance to make amends in 1990 uh, in Auckland, of course. I guess in conditions that still suit Australians pretty well uh, on the fast greens there in New Zealand. You, you got your chance to make amends. But it wasn't all clean sailing for you, was it? You needed to have a big win over none other than David Bryant to even feature in the finals. Yeah, it was uh, lost a game on the way through to the Irishman, and uh, uh, and of course uh, my margin was fifty nine, and he and, and David Bryan with margin was six was sixty eight, and uh, I had to win by uh, fifteen uh, against David, and of course uh, when I when I was playing uh, when I, before I started, I went to the manager, and uh, the manager said, oh you know if you can just win, be a feather in your cap. And uh, I said, well, I'm, I didn't come to New Zealand to, to just be a feather in my cap. I said, I came here to win the gold medal. And uh, I'm going to try to win as much as I can, you know. And I was up 24 to 7 against David Bryant. And, uh, but he did catch up and uh, he got to 14. And I uh, was lucky enough to get the next, next point to, to win 25-14. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, to play in the final. Yeah, and that final was against one of the uh, young up-and-comers in the sport at that stage, or I guess the, the young prodigy of the sport in Mark McMahon. Yeah, Mark, Mark didn't, didn't lose a game right through. Uh, he, he was uh, a natural player. He, he was just so good. And um, But uh, being on New Zealand Greens that I already uh, won a lot of games there and uh, tournaments in the, in the years before, I, uh, I had... Uh, uh, I uh, I uh, sort of uh, 
uh, I back myself to uh, to beat Mark, uh, uh, but unfortunately it rained uh, it, for me. Uh, it rained the day before, and we didn't play. We had to play the uh, next day because it was too much too much water on the greens, and we had to play next day. And uh, of course, before I went, the only thing I could see was. Gold, gold, gold. Uh, every sign I saw, that's all I watched, the gold. And I, I knew I, I had to win that game, you know. And, uh, and we, had a, we had a great game. To, uh, we, it was in front of me 14-12. Uh, and uh, that's when I changed the game uh, with the mat. I put the mat up uh, uh, and put the jack near the ditch. And from then on, he didn't score again. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of tactics involved. It's not just playing bowls, it's a lot of practice uh, trying to win a game. Yeah, well, uh, and my experience came to the fore at the stage. We'll delve into that a little bit more in a moment. So, did you did you have a sense of, of the moment? Because, I mean, being the first Australian to win the singles gold at the Commonwealth Games, it's a remarkable achievement, and, and no one can ever take that one away from you. You will always be the first to do it. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I always said before I went to New Zealand, I always said we had the best bowlers in the world in Australia. And uh, and I, I couldn't believe that we could not win a gold medal in the singles. And uh, and because it was David Bryant who used to beat, beat, uh, beat us all the time, he, he won four gold medals in the singles. Uh, and uh, if he beat me in that game, he, like he had not beat me, he only had to get 15, uh, 16 really to, to get in the final. And uh, so uh, it was a, a big achievement to, to beat him to, to 14. And that was that what gave me the chance of winning the gold medal. And uh, yeah, and, uh, I, I, really, uh, I, was, I really tried my best, 100%, to uh, in that uh, I, I wanted to really win that gold medal. And that was, that's why I went to New Zealand for it. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, let's move on to 1994. It was uh, Victoria in Canada. And uh, obviously you went there as, as defending Commonwealth Games champion and uh, ended up with a bronze. Uh, I think it was a narrow miss that uh, saw you out of the final. Yeah, it was a narrow miss because uh, Tony Alcock was uh, playing the Irishman and he was down 19 to 6, 25 up. And... Uh, and I finished my game and I went to, to 10, 25-10, and I had the margin and I only had to see uh, Tony Alcock could lose by one and I would have played in the final again. But unfortunately, I uh, uh, don't know what happened, uh, but uh, things must have happened. Because uh, from 19 to 6 down, he ended up winning 25 to 19. Wow. So, yeah, so uh, it's one of those things that happen in bowls and, um, yeah, uh, so I didn't make it. But you got yourself a bronze and that gave you the full set. So you've got a gold, a silver and a bronze from the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, well, uh, uh, <laughs> that's what they used to say. Is, uh, you know, like uh, my, my rally said, oh, well, at least you've you got, you got the set for now, you know. Like, uh, yeah, I said, I suppose that's one consolation. <laughs> do you, do you, and have you still got all the medals? You know where they are? Yeah, I got the medals in the garage here uh, at my place and uh, with the honour board, with all the all the uh, singles that I won, uh, especially master singles. Yeah. I won about 150 master singles in my life. Brilliant. And uh, they, they were like I... Uh, you know, I'd like to explain something that in, after the Commonwealth Games in Brisbane, uh, there, was a, there was about at least uh, eight or nine of us, the best bowlers in the world, that went professional. Because uh, before, if you earned more than $500, you couldn't play in the Commonwealth Games. So we decided, I was one of the first, that we decided to go, to go professional. And, um, and that's why in 1986, I couldn't represent Australia in uh, Commonwealth Games. And the same with Willie Wood and the same with David Bryan and Peter Ballas and the rest of the top players in the world. And when they played in, uh, in Edinburgh, in, uh, in Scotland, uh, they didn't have many spectators because no, there was nobody there of the, of, the, of the names. And that's when they changed from, um, uh, you could receive any money and you can still represent the Commonwealth Games. Interesting. So, uh, so I, changed, I changed the game a little bit there. 
And you were, uh, yeah. Yeah, you certainly were a game changer and I want to get into some of that now. So in terms of winning uh, a Commonwealth Games gold medal, we've now seen Kelvin Kirko and Aaron Wilson, and I know you're on the on the scoreboard for Aaron Aaron Wilson's win, which must have given you a great thrill as well. But um, we've seen those players take gold for Australia now in the singles, all three being aggressive players, yourself, Kelvin, and Aaron. Do you think that's what it takes to win a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in the singles? Well, it, it does take uh, power and, and, and the will to win more than anything, uh, because. Uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to have it all. And uh, I, I remember when uh, Kelvin represented, before Kelvin represented for the singles, um, uh, I suggested to one of the Australian selectors to, um, to have Kelvin in the singles to play for Australia. Because the only way I said, anyone, is anyone there that to win the gold medal would be Kelvin. And, uh, and that's uh, then the, they decided to put Calvin to play the singles because, uh, yeah, they didn't have him to play the singles at that stage. And, uh, and that's why uh, I, like I started Calvin off when he was 13 year old. And um, his parents came to me as a coach and they asked me if I could help him because he didn't have, you know, like he, he's, he, he, had, he had a problem with the, with the leg and that. And um, so I decided to help him out a, f a fair bit and uh, was always enjoyed trying to help out the disability people. Uh, and not only him, I had others too that I helped out. And that gave me more pleasure to uh, help out these sort of people than, than anyone else. Because I had a soft heart for them because they uh, have a disability and it's not their fault. And uh, if I could help them anyway, I did. And uh, yeah, and of course, uh, Kelvin came one of the best bowlers in the, in the world, and, uh, and the same with the same with uh, Mark Casey and and uh, Nathan Rice. Uh, I played with them when they were youngsters, 16 and 17, and we won tournaments together. And, uh, and that I helped them out, all. and uh, yeah, so I, I enjoyed uh, playing with these uh, youngsters when I was. 1988, as you might remember, uh, in, the, in the biggest storm in the, in the Gold Coast, uh, they called this a green machine, and, and there was Calvin playing third for me, and he's the only one that could uh, really play. The other two was one was 14 year old, and the other one was 17 year old, and they hardly play balls. They don't play balls anymore, and uh, and of course uh, we ended up winning the biggest tournament in, in the world, really, because there must have been about seven, eight hundred. Uh, teams playing, uh, we, as you know, every state used to come up here and play in the big carnival. Yeah, and you did the same thing. Yep, and uh, as you know, and uh, the greens were, were so good those days in the 80s and 90s that, um, yeah, the, and we, Calvin and I, ended up winning that tournament for them. <laughs> and it was a, that was the greatest, the greatest win ever, more than the gold medal. Oh, wow, wow. Mm, let's was. let's talk about your aggressive style because you you certainly you you say you changed the game in a few ways and and it's spot on. You you certainly brought the big driving into the sport that we probably hadn't seen before. And now we now we marvel at Ryan Bester and and these guys that send down the uh, the thunderbolts and it's much more part of the sport nowadays. How did you use your drives as a tactic? See those days. Uh, uh it worked a bit more than what it does these days because now these days they uh, have a spot to jack and uh, if you do kill the end they you put the jack on the on the tee and those days it wasn't so uh, like I used, I used it as a attacking uh, in the first few ends I used to attack a lot uh, if somebody if, if my opposition got very close to the jack I used to attack at the head as much as possible, and because uh, I was good at it, uh, I didn't miss much. Uh, my, my average was about eighty percent, which is incredible. And, uh, yeah. Mm. So, so you really gotta gotta have a good average if you're driving. Uh, and I used to use it as, as a boxing match. Uh, the first few ends you soften them up, and then they gain defence. 
and that's what it was. And I used to, and then they used to draw in the yard or, or a couple of feet away from the jack. And at that point, I my game came into it, and I I just drew them off, and and uh, yeah, I only attacked very little after that. So that, that's, that was the way I played the game, you know, the singles especially. Uh, I used to attack uh, at the beginning, uh, trying to get trying to get the bowlers in defence. Yeah, and that's what happens. Now, fair to say that uh, your style wasn't everyone's cup of tea. Uh, you know, a, a, a brash sort of guy out there, um, absolute fierce competitor on the green, uh, and it didn't suit everyone. No, especially my uh, state selectors. Uh, <laughs> uh, it didn't suit them uh, because... Uh, but then when I started winning uh, uh, nearly everything in the 70s and 80s and, and that, they, they came to my floor because they said, oh, Marvie, that's the way we should play the game. And, uh, uh, yeah, they, uh, I was very disappointed that, uh, with our state selectors those days because uh, our state selectors were just state presidents. And uh, they used to pick uh, one player from each state to represent the country. And uh, there was no professionalism in at all. And, uh, and it made me sick uh, to see that sort of thing. But we, you know, we didn't have any professional selectors at that stage. And, uh, but then uh, uh, when, the, when the state selectors came professionally in the 90s and that, was a little, lot different, and uh, but uh, when I came back from the Commonwealth Games, win the gold medal, and uh, and they picked the state side, and I was left out. So that, that, I mean, uh, so disappointing that a state uh, selectors don't pick you, and the Australian selectors pick you. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs in my in my career. And, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I, I always had my heart on my sleeves and I always will. And uh, I played the game the way I wanted to play. Uh, and uh, so, I, uh, yeah, uh, I did it my way, in other words. Absolutely. Uh, hmm. And I still enjoy it and I'm loving it now that I, I've uh, played with the arm. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, it's... Uh, no, it's a great game. Of bowls. It's, uh, the bowls is, is a, a great game. Uh, and I've played for 51 years now. And um, I'm still enjoying it. So that's, that's great. Can you get the big drive away with the arm, uh, Rob? How does that go? Yeah, I'm still driving with them. And, uh, okay. not, as often, uh, not as often I used to, but when I really have to, I do. And uh, I've only been playing it for about a year. And... Uh, uh, and and uh, it's another little little story that uh, uh, with uh, now I'm playing with a guy that had uh, motor arm disease and uh, is the only one living in Australia with it. And there's one in America. There's only two of them that lived through because uh, mainly only give you six or nine months to live. Wow. And he ha has come through uh, in the 80s. He was in a wheelchair right up to 2000. Uh, to, 2005, and then he decided to to uh, play bowls, uh, but he, you know, he had this stick to to help himself, and um, he started bowling in in 2005, and I'm playing with him now, and we are winning so many games together. Uh, I will say we played about 60, 70 games, and we we only lost about four, and. Uh, and we enjoyed the game so much together. And I even uh, put him in uh, I, in uh, in this pink shirt and, and pink hat. And, and, and we we all in pink. And I even got pink bowls, as you want to see them. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's the bowl. That's the bowl oh. that, that I've had. There with, it is. SARS. With SARS, yep. with SARS on it. Yep. So that, that, was, that was my nickname. Yes, and stuck with me. Uh, so now, now we, uh, especially uh, as of my home life, with my uh, with, uh, thirteen years, we've been together with my wife Jane, and we've been married for six. And we haven't, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't have got a better, lovely lady. Uh, 
and uh, she looks after me and uh, we have a, we have a great time where we are we are we live in a village that's a uh, 50 year lifestyle lifestyle village and it's um, very clean and you know and very safe and uh, I really can't ask for more absolutely and uh, you know it's um, and, and we got three, I got three lovely kids with grandchildren not very far from me uh, and I uh, you know and they uh, they're so close and they we have a great time so yeah. Fantastic. Hey, uh, just just a couple of the other awards that you you won. I, you know, the the medal for the Order of Australia, of course, uh, in 1996, which must have been an amazing honour. Uh, Australian Sports Medal in 2000, and the Queensland Sports Hall of Fame in 2009. Just wonderful achievements. Yeah, uh, I got, I was really surprised uh, for winning those awards, and uh, and uh, so, uh, but. I, I, I'm very proud of them, and uh, uh, I mean, there's not many other awards that I can win. Uh, the only one is the uh, uh, the only awards I, I haven't won is the uh, legend, the legend award. So I'm hoping that one of these days, you never know, before I pass away, they might even give me that one. I'll try and put in a good word for you, mate. We'll try. Hey, uh, uh, how, how do you want, want to be remembered in, in the sport, Rob? I mean, we know that uh, this segment is brought to us by Legacy Lighting. It's all about legacy. What's your legacy for the sport of bowls? Well, my legacy, I like, I like to be remembered uh, uh, mainly that I, that I put the sport on the map for a start uh, because I... I uh, uh, I, I was the entertainer of the sport, uh, and not only me. I, we had we had two others entertainer. We had we had uh, Peter Peter uh, from from Tasmania, and uh, and Paul Richards from uh, South Australia. There was only three of us that were that put the balls on the map, and uh, and I feel. And the other one is that uh, I like to help the ones that can't help themselves. Uh, that's what I like to remember of. Yeah, it's fantastic. Rob, it's been an absolute true pleasure to uh, to have this chat with you. Um, as you say, you've got that title that no one can ever take away. You are the first Australian to have won the Commonwealth Games gold medal in the singles, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, well, I'm really proud of it. Thank you very much. All right. There it is, Legends Under Lights, brought to you by Bowls Australia and its great partner in Legacy Lighting.